Hello friends, this is our 8th lecture on Sir Philip Sidney's An Apology for Poetry and we saw that uh, in the 7th lecture we saw the nobleness of the poet. How the poet is nobler than the lawyer, the philosopher, the historian and the moral philosopher. Because as Aristotle has said, they speak only of particulars, but as far as Catalan, Catalan, that's what Aristotle says. So Catalan means universal. The poet speaks of universal truth. Catalan, Catalan. That is French word, sorry, Greek word, it means Catalan. So from here we have got the word Catholic. Catholic. So you have heard of Catholic religion. They claim that their religion is universal religion. That is Catholic. Catalan comes from the word, uh, sorry, Catholic comes from the word Catalan. It means universal. It means it's universal. So, according to the Catholics, their church is universal. Or their religion is a universal religion. Okay, so that's about that. Now today, uh, our point is, main point is that uh, the poet is peerless. The title of today's lecture is the peerless poet. Peerless poet. Means you cannot compare him to any other peerless. He is all in all, so to say. He is the uh, superior. Uh, when we compare others, you see, he is the he is the master. Nobody is to challenge him. Yesterday, in the last class, we saw the challenge, those people, competitors. But today, there is, he says, that all the competitors, we have, uh, we have sent them off to their places, to their homes, or to their area of study. Today, we have got the peerless point. And he says, of course, there is a comparison here, philosophy. The philosopher gives definitions, isn't it? He defines love, he defines virtue, he defines vices, he defines glory, and he defines uh, friendship. Listen, what is friendship and so on? And that is very abstract. Wordy, yes, yesterday we saw, wordy descriptions, wordy descriptions, like rhino's description, like elephant's description, and a joy, and a and a luxurious mansion's description. But when the poet shows the picture. But here he says, continues with the philosopher. Philosopher, what does the philosopher do? He gives you weird descriptions. But the poet, what does he do? He feigns this in characters, imitations. For example, the first one that uh, Sidney gives example is Marcus Tullius Cicero. Marcus first. Marcus Tullius, Tullius Cicero, United Statesman and the great orator, as a great orator of Rome. His full name is Marcus Tullius Cicero. He is known by the name Tulli. Tulli. This is the name. Tulli. Now Marcus Tullius Cicero. He takes hours in his orations, speeches, to define what patriotism is. What patriotism is. But when you see, when you see, and cases, and cases, and C H, and C H, and C H I S E S, and cases, and cases, pronounced like this. Anchisis. Anchisis. That is it is no. Anchisis. Listen, Anchisis, sorry. There is an M here. Anchisis. And who is Anchisis? The father of member of the royal family of Troy and the father of famous, the most virtuous Aeneas. Aeneas. The hero of Virgil's in it. 
when this is aiming, and here he is here. So, in cases, he speaks in the standing in the midst of the burning by Troy, burning Troy, speaking. In between, in the in flames, surrounded by flames, he is speaking about his country. So that when you find this, the, an incarnation of patriotism. How clearly stated. Cicero might have taken hours, pages in writing, to define patriotism. But when you see Anchises, the father of Enes, speaking in the midst of flames, when the city goes in flames, he stands there and speaks fervently of the love of his country. See, it is more vivid, it is more, it will uh, give a direct hit, not just going around and giving examples and other things like that. You are there, you are present, you are the very, the inga, a paragon, you can say, incarnation, a paragon of patriotism. This is what the poet does, and crisis. And Caesar, the poet, feigns or imitates. May not be historical, but he may have used this imagination. He has got imaginative freedom. The poet has imaginative freedom. So, he must have done that. But again, you can see, you will see Ulysses. No? Ulysses, patriotism again. So now we are talking about patriotism. So, Ulysses. Ulysses was, for seven years, he was in the company of Calypso. Calypso. Cali Calypso. And Calypso? Calypso that is pronounced in English Calypso. Calypso. Calypso in Greek mythology is a nymph, a very beautiful nymph. And she could keep Ulysses in her palace or under her delights. No, she was pleasing and uh, arranging, giving all comfort to him. Seven long years. But although he was enjoying the delights given by Calypso the nymph, he used to speak about his barren and beggarly Ithaca. That is his native place. So, it's all right that he is uh, immersed in this delight, but he remembers, understand, he remembers his, his native place, his land, although it is beggarly, although it is barren, still he thinks about that. That is another clear example of Patriotism. So you have like that. Understand? And now that is about patriotism. We have two, uh, two uh, heroes. The one in, in stress speaking here. For example, Ancaisa speaks about the, the love of his country in stress. He stressed at that time. You know, flames. The city is in flames. And then what about the uh, Ulysses, he left Ithaca for 10 years he was absent and all these 10 years he was, he spent enjoying his life in Calypsos. But in the company of Calypso, the nymph, the Greek mythology, but in between she used to, he used to think about his country and his countrymen. So that is patriotism. Understand? How much time will the philosopher take to discuss, to give a definition and then examples and so on? Now you see the thing of anger. Anger. You have two great characters. No? Anger. You want to see anger? Then you should see Ajax. Ajax. And uh, Ajax. The pronunciation is Ajax. Ajax. 
ايد جالس انا كويس ايد جالس اللي هو اكليس اكليس ايد جالس سو هي 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 واز كافرينج فيجر جريد فاريل ان ذا تروجن باون ان in the in the iliad homer gives a picture of him you see him hitting and sh- and kicking sheep and oxen and uh, actually in his mind he is expressing his fury towards well, agamemnon and many leaves He thinks that the sheep and oxen they are Agamemnon and the Agamemnon and the, and the many leaves, many leaves, brothers, sons of Atreus, Atreus, sons of Atreus, Greek. So Agamemnon, he is the he was the he was the supreme commander of the Greek forces, Agamemnon. and his brother menelaus the trojan war the cause of the trojan war was paris the trojan prince you know took helen the wife of menelaus menelaus is the brother of agamemnon and agamemnon he was the commander in chief of the greek army the united greek army and then what happens is you find ajax hitting and kicking and uh, and shooting shooting the oxen and sheep and he thinks that he imagines that this is how homer presents him in iliad he imagines that this is he is hitting and uh, kicking and spitting on agamemnon and uh, many leaves imagine anger anger in its purest form you can see in it and it is fury fury and anger because you remember that he was he 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 single handed fought with hector the bravest of the trojans then tied him to killed him and tied him, tied his corpse, that body, to the chariot, Achilles chariot, and uh, dragged the dead body around the walls of Troy. What more than fury? Incarnation of fury. How much time a philosopher may take to explain what fury is, what anger is? Understand? So here, you find the thing just in front of you anger is here you look at this guy at the man and many leaves and then you can see diamond the famous character diamond the greek who negotiated with the the towards the end of the trojan war he negotiated diamond 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 He was the chief negotiator of the Greeks with the Trojan, with the Trojans. And finally, you know what happened? Temper. He's he's the personification of temperance, and Ulysses also. Ulysses and uh, Diomed, they represent temperance. Temperance. Moderation. Temperance. Moderate. So you know, at the end, toward the end of the Trojan War, there was a. Uh, There was negotiation between the Trojans and the Greek, and Diomed was uh, he was a warrior, Greek warrior. He was understood with the duty, and he manages to get back Cressida, Cressida, the love affair between Troilus and Cressida, Cressida. The the pronunciation is Cressida, Cressida. Troilus and Cressida. but never to return her to the trojans and you know the trojan prince troilus had a very 
sad and tragic ends because Cresset did not return. She remained with Diomed in Greece. So that's an another story. But for temperance and moderation, the two personifications, you know, two definitions, you can see the concrete expression of tangible, you can touch from time, that is Diomed and the Ulysses. So now how many times in philosophy, how much time will it take to describe this? You saw patriotism. You saw anger and fury. Patriotism in in Anchises and Ulysses. Fury you saw in in Ajax and Achilles. So Ajax and Achilles. And then from diamond and you stumble. Now you have got a friendship. Yeah, in 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 it, Virgil says the two characters. Friendship and love. Nessus. Nessus. Nonsense means Nessus. Nessus and you is. You Yuri. Uh, the pronunciation is very interesting now. Euryalis, Euryalis, you understand. So you have got the Euryalis. You, Euryalis, Euryalis. They are personifications of what characters representing in Virgil's in it. Love and friendship. If you see two friends in the class, oh, they are like Nessus and Eurydice. Means they are they have got great love and their friendships cannot be. No one can make any misunderstanding in the relationship between these two people. So friendship to define. The, in, if we give a very description of friendship, how would it look like? But it is a difficult thing. Listen, so you have got this Nisus. And you have got the you have got the repenting conscience. Repenting conscience, you know the person, Oedipus, King Oedipus. He stands for that. Oedipus is repenting conscience. Repenting conscience. And you have got Repenting pride, it's another thing. repenting pride in Agamemnon. 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 Just now we have seen Agamemnon, the Greek commander, the son of Atreus. The brother of men leaves. Many leaves. Many leaves. Many leaves. Many. Many leaves. It is his wife that Paris, Prince Paris kidnapped. Helen of Troy. That is Helen of Troy. Prince Helen was in Greek. So Helen of Troy. She became Helen of Troy because she was, um, can, we cannot say abducted, but now by him, by the Trojan prince Paris. And then the Trojan war, that's the cause of the Trojan war, the fight between the two. So Agamemnon, the brother of Menelaus, he is the concrete example for repenting pride, repenting pride. Repenting conscience, repenting pride. You know the sad story of Agamemnon? Agamemnon's wife, Clytemnestra. Clytemnestra. And her lover, Aegisthus. Aegisthus. So Clytemnestra and Aegisthus together, they planned, executed a plan to kill Agamemnon and murder, murder him. So his was a silent, 
Radhikant, his own wife plotted against him. His own wife along with his, her lover, Idhistas. See that? That's Radhikant, but he is known for repenting pride. He might have been very proud. And, understand? Yes. And then you have got another concept in philosophy. So pride you have, love you have, you have friendship you have, isn't it? It is. That is, it is father of, as I told you, Agamemnon and the Menelius. So he stands for what? He stands for cruelty. It is cruelty. That is written at Trius. But it is uh, Atreus. No, Atreus. So he is father of the self-devouring cruelty. Not ordinary cruelty, but he stands for self-devouring. Self-devouring cruelty. Some people are like that. They are cruel to, to they are cruel to such a uh, degree that they they destroy themselves by their cruelty. That is it is. So we have got patriotism, we have got anger, we have fury, we have got repenting pride, we have got repenting conscience, you have got uh, friendship and love. You have got patience. Why should you describe and get bored? You have got patience. And now you have got again very interesting questions like you know you you remember this man P A N P A N D A R and that is pronounced Panda Panda not Panda but Panda the witty and licentious uncle of Crystal Crystal who arranged that illegitimate relation between Troilus and then Crystal. So now in, the, in, in our day-to-day -day conversation, people even call such kind of men panda. Oh, he's a panda. Means he will arrange illegitimate relations between a boy or a man and a panda. Understand? This one is a panda. And then again you have got not very picture but the all kinds of people you find. All kinds of people. In mythology and in literature, that is feigning imitation. No? These are imitation according to Aristotle. The image making and the image shaping faculty of the mind. So it projects, it, it, there's a clarity in it. When you say anger, think of Achilles. Or think of Ajax. Oh, anger. Oh, he's like Ajax. He's like our Ajax. That teacher is like an Ajax, always angry. Again, this has come in everyday use. As a panda, this has it. And then you have got what is this? Violence of ambition in Theban brothers. Violence of ambition in Theban brothers, or you can have in English. In English drama, you have got <coughs> Macbeth. It's violence of ambition. He said, it's like Macbeth. So the, the concept is defined. There's a concrete example. What do we want? What do you find in, in the Bible? You have got Lassar and the Dives. <coughs> so a selfish rich man, selfishness and the Wealth, you have got dives, D I V is so no one thing. And lasso, I need a voice. So if you read that parable, you get an idea. If you are selfish and wealthy, you are not caring for other people, you are not sharing with other people, you will be burning in hell like a dives. If you are poor and suffering, nobody will look after you. You will be in the bosom of Abraham. These are not historical, but they are instructing parables. So too, you have got the prodigal son. 
the great love of God and you have got charity. The divine love defined in prodigal son. And you have got charity defined in good Samaritan. What more do you What more do you want? Understand? And then further if we go east of fables. What are east of fables? The dumb speak virtue. Speak of, of virtue. Yes. Understand? Now these are not historical or anything, but with the imitation of the artist. The artist imitates. Thomas was Utopia. Another imitation. That is welfare states. Now if some poets, they are mediocre, or some product of imitation, it remains so low. The poetry is not to be abused or found fault with, but the poet. Not the art, but the artificial. So there is a Sydney course, a Latin score course. Sydney quotes a Latin statement, and that is very, very, very meaningful. So I will write it on the board and explain. Mediocribus esse poetis. Mediocribus. Mediocribus esse poetis. Poetis. Non dei, non dei, sorry, non dei, non dei, see, mediocre is a poetis. That is mediocre, low standard, mediocre. Mediocre is poets, of poets. That is the literal translation. Yes, that means is. If you are a mediocre poet, you are not liked by non the God, Deus, Devi. In a new study in the European language, you will find the relationship between Devi and Deus. Because Sanskrit and the English, they belong to the same family. Latinos, that's Devi, Sanskrit, Devi. Non the non hominus. Non the non hominus. Hominus in a homo, human beings. Non, non the non hominus, non consessare columne. Non con se columne. This is what he is said about. He is caught about a mediocre voice. So if I work of artists of low standard, don't blame the poesy. Because we start only with the Stephen Gosson's abuse. So don't abuse. Who is to be blamed? The person is to be blamed. The poet is to be blamed, not the poesy. So he says, because poesy is very powerful, it is universal. And they said, mediocre was as a poetist. The mediocre among the poets. What happens? Not liked by God, not liked by humans. Hominus means human beings. Homo sacer. You must have read it. Agamben's essay. Homo sacer. Homo. Homo means man. So, hominus non concessare columne. Publishes also. Column. Columne. They are, if, oh, the publishers also don't like. So if something goes wrong, once again, medio, mediocre boost. I told you, remember one of my lectures, the Latin is a phonetic language. Means you write and read in the same way. But English is unphonetic. You write in one way and read in a different way. Isn't it? You write D, B, T, and then you say that. You write K, N, I, F, E, then you say knife. You don't say the video, you don't say knife, right? But here every 
every letter is pronounced. That is, uh, mediocribus. Let's not be here another no. Marcus, Marcus means that Tullius Cicero. If it is English, we will say Martel Cesar. <laughs> Something like that. Martel Cesar. What is it? And French is the, probably I will say that, I don't know French, but certain French names are really, very, very confusing. Isn't it? Uh, Andre. Spelling is ending in U, X, and all those. But it's Andre. C A L A I S. And he pronounced it as Kali, not Kalis. Then it's Kali. So like that. Because I don't know French. But anyway, it's difficult. For me. Okay. So here, mediocre goes as a poetist, non the non hominous, non consensual columnae. Mediocre among the poets are not liked by God, not liked by men. Not liked by publishers. So he has quoted this, I think, because of, uh, he wants to establish the fact that poetry is supreme, but the poet may not. And if something goes with the wrong with the poetry, it is not poetry is to be blamed. Because our first point is everything is all the arguments are geared to one thing: what is the abuse of poetry by Stephen Gosson. That's the bad thing. Understand? And then you have got, you have a, a quotation from, I would, I, would, I would request you to take this down. It's very interesting also, very nice. Means the nice in the sense that full of, uh, uh, full of meaning and uh, it, exp it explains all those, all what I have told you so far in the last 30, 20 or 25 minutes, you will see in that just one sentence. So I think it will be very useful to us to today to conclude today's lecture. Or today's program we can, we can conclude like that. And that is, you know, that is he uh, says, all virtues, vices and passions. All virtues, vices and passions. This now we have seen, you know. Some virtues and uh, some vices and all. Anger. Vice. One of the vices and anger. Ambition. Violence. Violence of ambition. So then anger, violence of ambition. Then we saw patriotism, love, that is a virtue. So all virtues, vices and passions, where will you see? So in their own natural seats. In their own night, late to the view. In their own, in their own natural, natural seats, laid to the view. That is the thing. So the poet can do that, not the philosopher. See the difference. All vices, all virtues, diamond, Ulysses. Then you have uh, Ajax, Achilles, you have Nessus and Euryalis, you have Agamemnon, you have Oedipus, all taken from mythology. You have uh, uh, the patriotism, you have Ulysses, and you have uh, Oedipus, so Oedipus, and Media, Media. Media, there is another character, Media. M E, and this is spelling is, spelling is Media. Media. M E D E A. D E A. Media. Oh, sorry. Media. Media. That is sweet revenge. The Media, she took. Revenge upon her, that is a wise in fact. Revenge upon her unfaithful husband. Sweetness of revenge. Medea. Again, a character in Greek mythology. So, revenge, you have got 
virtues like patriotism. Patriotism you have. You have. Uh, then you have got a friendship. Friendship, love, and um, temperance. Temperance. See You have temperance. You have friendship. You have love. Then you have. Um, uh, you have what? The delight, etc. Uh, these are what, these are you can say virtues. What about vices? Revenge. Just now we had media revenge. Then you have ambition. In Theban Buddhist, you are saying Theban Buddhist. Ambition. Ambition you have. And uh, ah, repentance is here. Repentance. Repentance. Revenge, ambition, cruelty, self devouring cruelty of increase, increase cruelty. See that. You can see all virtues, vices, and passions. Passions, hell is anger, anger here, and Ajax, anger and Ajax. So, all virtues, vices, and passions, charity. In, in charity, divine love, divine love in prodigal son, charity in good Samaritan, selfishness, selfish in Lazar and the rich man, the parable, virtues again, Aesop's fables and the perfect state that is utopia. You find this where all virtues, vices, and passions in their own natural seeds. Natural seeds means characters laid to the view. Laid to the view. That we seem not to hear of them. That's the thing. That, that we seem not to hear of them. For example, you know, this quotation is it will be very, I must say, uh, supportive. Even if you forget some of these names and descriptions and so just write this. But clearly to see through them. But clearly to see through them. This is the quotation. Understand? So this is the operation. Taken from apology for poetry. This is the difference between philosophy and this. We get a short note on philosophy. What is the difference between philosophy and poetry? Or how philosophy, poetry is superior to philosophy and so on. Just quote this. Just quote this sentence. All virtues, vices, and passions in their own natural sense laid to the laid to laid to the view that we seem not to hear of them. Where do we hear of them in philosophy? But clearly to see through them. When Ajax beating and kicking and shooting his the oxen and the sheep, you see and fury. Achilles dragging the dead body of Hector around the uh, walls of Troy, tying the dead body to his chariot, victorious. You see anger. When Anchises, surrounded by flames, speaks the highly of Troy, you see through patriotism. When Ulysses is chafing at all, Expressing his dislike even in these midst of delights given by Calypso. He's thinking about nostalgia about his, his country, his native land. Although it is barren and burgerly, he says. Understand? Then you find the usury, personification of usury. You have Shaila. Oh, he is a Shaila. And you find an easily credible and jealous person, you have got Othello. 
when you find a person who is practicing villainy for the sake of villainy you have yago so you see through them if you see someone friendship again you can see bizarre and and antony friendship great friendship this is it when you want to see the logical argument person personification you have got portia see that this is all this imitations so categorically you can say with because i am also man of literature so categorically we can say that with uh, self lucidly the poise is superior to all other arts and all other branches of knowledge because it is so clear it's nothing more clear and uh, clarifying than poesy nothing more universal than poesy so we support the defense poesy on this basis you can remember this character is not, not, not very difficult for example we start with the cicero how he speaks he gives explanations of orations on patriots but when you but when you see and cases the father of inis and what about inis what about cyrus son of an cyrus and virgil serious all virtues he is a man endowed with all possible virtues in this world his greatest virtue looking after his old father infirm father he carried his infirm father old father on his back when troy was burning to escape from there he could not walk but he carried him on his back what more do you want today's world is the is the best example of filial love filial means son's love for the mother today's world we know the the the, the worst cruelty perpetrated on old people that is the sons and daughters they abandon their abandon in their homes their parents in old age homes and go in search of wealth and pleasure there is a hindi film i forgot this name title means where uh, uh, i think it's hema malini and uh, amina bets they are right that as parents i forgot the name okay but you may be knowing that but that's an important here so that's what i said understand whenever you say if you want the paragon of virtue you have got enius whose product is that it is the product of the imitation of virgil this is it so you cannot the greatest instructor is poesy universal concepts poesy concrete poesy as you can see here all the juice vices and passions the philosopher will go on explaining and defining but the poet will show you in their own natural seeds the characters laid to the view that we seem not to hear of them don't be satisfied with hearing of them but clearly to see through them when you see macbeth committing one murder after another what is it it is nothing but violence of ambition how much time it might take to describe or explain what is violence of ambition but just to see the character i hope you understand okay so then we will continue with this in the ninth lecture so we will continue further reasons and arguments for defending poesy till then bye have a nice time take this